Hello everyone and welcome to our class assembly. Today we're going to share facts we have learned about World War II. We'd like to take you back in time to one of the most difficult periods in our recent history back to 1939 and the beginning of the Second World War. This term we have been learning about World War II. We have enjoyed this topic so much that we want to tell you all about it. During our topic we did a lot of research into the Second World War and the devastating effect it had on our country and its people. In 1933, Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany. He promised to make Germany great again and secretly began building up the armed forces. Hitler began taking over neighbouring countries, Austria and Czechoslovakia. The British and French leaders let him get away with this because he promised he would make no more demands. Hitler broke his promise despite being warned by Britain and France that if he invaded Poland, he would have to fight them too. On the 1st of September 1939, Hitler invaded Poland and Neville Chamberlain, the British Prime Minister, announced that Britain had declared war on Germany. This is London. You will now hear a statement by the Prime Minister. I am speaking to you from the Cabinet Room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British Ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. All men between the ages of 18 and 40 could be called up into the army, navy, navy or air force service. Over the six years of war, millions joined the army service. Britain didn't fight Germany alone. They were she was supported by her allied forces. These included troops from France, Russia, Canada, India, Australia, and eventually America. Fighting quite literally took all over the world, on land, in sea, and in air. When World War II broke out, Neville Chamberlain was Britain's Prime Minister. But in, but in 1940, Winston Churchill took over. He was a tough and confident leader, his famous speeches gave people hope. Hope was Britain's biggest and strongest weapon to fight against the enemies. Evacuation was introduced in 1939. The government decided that the cities were simply too dangerous for children, so 1.5 million children and pregnant women were sent to live in the countryside. Children had to leave their parents to go and live with strangers in the countryside. It was a time of great sadness as mothers kissed their children goodbye. Many children stayed away from their homes for the full six years after the war lasted and only saw their parents occasionally. 38,000 children never seen their parents again. In the summer of 1940, the Germans planned to invade Britain. They attacked from their air but were defeated by the RAF. It was called the Battle of Britain. The Spitfire was Britain's most modern plane of the day. It was fast and effective. The people of Britain enjoyed hearing the purring of the engine overhead as it gave them hope. You might remember seeing one fly over our school recently. Wasn't that amazing? In 1940, Britain experienced the Blitz. Emery planes bombed Britain's major. Cities, ports and munitions factories, Clyde Bank in Glasgow, the target of one of the most in intense bombing raids of World War II. During the Blitz, more than 40,000 British people were killed, including women and children, and, mo and over two million houses were destroyed. When Germany failed to defeat Britain through bombing raids, they tried to make Britain surrender by cutting off its supply of food and goods from abroad. Submarines sunk ships and German planes continued to bomb ports. Because of the lack of food coming in from aboard, the British government had to make 
make sure that everyone in Britain got their share of food that was in short supply, so rationing was introduced. Rationing meant that each person was only allowed a certain amount of food each week, no matter how rich or poor they were. Luxuries such as sweets and exotic fruits weren't available at all. During the war, every night Britain had a blackout to make it difficult for enemy bombers to find their way. No light was allowed to show outside and air raid patrol wardens would walk the streets to find to enforce this law. When the en enemy bomber planes flew over Britain, it wasn't safe in homes and on the streets, so many people spent time in, an, in air raid shelters. They, they were warned about the attacks by an air raid siren. Some people had Anderson shelters in their garden. In larger cities and towns, the underground stations were the perfect shelter during an attack. During the war, many men left their jobs to sign up. Their positions were took by women, which keep the country running. This was the beginning of the women's independence and equality. The war was finally won in 1945 when German Germany surrendered to the Allied forces. The victory celebrations were immense with singing, dancing and street parties going on way into the night. The happiness was turned with great sadness, though during the war about half a million men, women and children from Britain and had been killed. Many fathers, brothers, uncles and sons never returned home. Every year we should try to remember those who have fought to keep our country safe and free by buying poppies from the poppy appeal. We also watched Goodnight Mr. Tom, which taught us about evacuees and their experience during World War II. Then we wrote a character description about um, Tom Oakley. P6 really enjoyed this film and felt like we learned a lot from it. Thank you for listening. Meet again.